one of the reasons our city is actually better off than a lot of others is we do have more diversity in our general fund revenues. We have more service fees and permits, um, and we actually have some operating transfers. We transfer, some people uh, have complained about this, I think it's a great thing that we have it. We transfer about $16 million from the enterprise funds as an equity transfer into the general fund. So we transfer some, fund, some money from the electric and the gas utility back into the general fund. And here's the rationale. And it's, the, it's, a, it's a defensible uh, rationale, and that is when the city set up the utilities initially, there were no enterprise funds. And uh, our forefathers and mothers who had the wisdom to set up a local utility, set it up in the part of the city, ultimately spun it off as a separate enterprise or fund. But in, in reality, what the general fund does is claim a dividend on its original investment in those utilities. And so some share of this comes back to the general good of the city in the general fund. If we didn't have that, we could add another right now $16 million to this $8.3 million budget gap that we would have. And I guarantee you um, the, the, the choices we would be facing with, uh, faced with would be almost impossible uh, to meet. We might as well you know, declare bankruptcy seriously like a Vallejo if we were hit with something for that size. But the reason I want you to focus on this is that later on, I'm, these are three taxes that each of you, I think I could say, uh, these are the regular tax contributions we all make to the city to fund this city. Our property tax bill, the sales tax that we spend on in, in various venues, and the utility users tax that we have on us as a city. The others might be if you've got a parking ticket, we gave you a ticket, uh, we get that revenue. But most people don't go out saying, I think I'm going to get, you know, 10 parking tickets this month. Um, so we focus on these main, and these are the taxes of the city. Yes. Well, that chart disappeared. Could you put Oh, yes, I can. The uh, utility users tax. That's a tax. All of that that portion of the utility department operations goes directly to the city, correct? Yeah. What what this is is what's the percentage, Lalo? It's a five percent on oh, right. Of the, yeah. of the, it's five percent of the commodity sales we have in the various utilities is collected through the utility users tax. That is separate from the rates that we each pay for electricity each month or gas. But that's also separate from the so-called return on investment. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. From the, uh, yeah. that's correct. Part. That's correct. So what you get from the utility part is the tax, and then the assessment for the, uh, for the return on investment, which of course comes from the, the rates that you charge. That's correct. Okay. Now, yes, sir. You said that, uh, uh, when you said the sales tax <clears throat> doesn't tax service. That's correct. Like, for instance, somebody, uh, haircut. Right. Yeah. Lawyers, whatever. Okay. Financial, you know, venture capital firms, right. okay. whatever. All of those sorts of things. Yeah. Yes, all of those sorts of things. So, um, one of the, one, actually an interesting point to, uh, Dick, Dick brings up is that um, we were originally facing about a $6.3 million gap for next year's budget when we did the long range financial forecast back in February. And that was based upon the projections we had for this upcoming year that also included rate increases in almost all of the utilities. And as we all looked at the budget and the situation, the utility staff and the utilities advisory commission and others said, well, you know, uh, and this time we really need to hold down rate increases this year. So basically for 20, for the next 2011, where there had been planned a 15% rate increase in electric, a 10% rate increase in gas, a 5% rate increase in water, there are zero rate increases proposed. So that's the good news on the rate side. The bad news was is that that modified our utility users tax collection by a million and a half dollars, so that kicked that over to the general fund. We now have this $8.3 million gap rather than the 6.4. There are some other things that were in there, but that was the main thing. If you go and buy a book um, locally, you pay a sales tax, some of that comes to the city. That's correct. If you go online and you buy it from Amazon.com and it gets sent to you with a 94301 zip code, so it's clearly being bought by someone in this city, 
Who gets the sales tax? So, uh, in a sense, we're supposed to get the sales tax, and there are some methodologies for how to do that. It's a use tax formula, but do you want to explain, well how it actually works? Well, that, that would be great. Okay, you. well, oh, I'm sorry. It, that's becoming the challenge that we're losing uh, as cities throughout the country with those cities that have sales tax, that we're losing that because it's really based on a brick and mortar where you can really enforce it when it's an online system, it's a lot more difficult. And sometimes what happens is when those entities report the dollars, it goes into a statewide pool instead of the city of Palo to itself. So then you get a share of that pool that is not proportionate to the actual activity of the sales. So that, that we believe that that's part of the, what's attributing the loss as well. Um, not, so not, is there a collective city effort to challenge that? Uh, yes, and if, I would say both statewide and even nationally. There's been a lot of movement, movement on legislation. I mean, in some ways, I don't know when, how recently is use tax legislation really burst on the scene, but it's just been building momentum in my career that I can remember over the past 10 years and just, and pr precisely because of these reasons. When you hear as, as I heard during the holiday season, one estimate was that you know 10% of holiday shopping was going to be done on iPhones. You sort of say, okay, suddenly, okay, that's a big potential lost market uh, for us in local government. Another example of the structural problem we've got. And yes. is, that, is that sort of a legal case that's making its way, or? There's federal uh, law that exempts them unless you're a brick and mortar, and that's the challenge for us uh, in state and local government. They, we, we are governed by the federal mandate of the law. There's a moratorium on this, so every time it comes up, it's been extended, and uh, there's a lot of uh, special interest groups backing that up, so that's the, we're, we're the little guy fighting the big guy, I guess, in, in this. But when you combine all the cities, you're not little guys, you're... A lot. Yeah, but isn't yeah. California now, in this year, heavily enforcing this? I mean, I know. Uh, Working firm, much, much harder. We have to go through and itemize every internet purchase. Right. And much, figure out much whether more. or not they, we paid sales right. tax, and if not, we have to pay right. the state. And exactly. so I would assume that bucket is going to get a lot It is getting easier. better. But as Lalo said, the distribution back to right, the localities sure is challenging. Proportionally us. correct. But. Yeah, it gets too complicated. Yes, sir. Just going down here. <clears throat> One part of Palo Alto downtown on University Avenue and the cross streets off of it, we've seen over the past two years more and more vacant yep. properties. Uh -huh. Obviously, that means less revenue coming to the city in obvious ways. Right. Um, I also remember probably four years ago at the ballpark using one example of, of one entity, uh, Cafe Verona, which was a very popular place. The rents were jacked up by the uh, the owner of that property. I don't. I can guess it's one of three, obviously, big names. And the, the property sat vacant for years. Now it's mm -hmm. Reposado or whatever. It took forever. Um, my question is, I bring that up because my question is, is there a way the city can work creatively with some of these uh, uh, property owners? And there's, as I said, the big three in, in town to see what can be done creatively to make the cost to operate a business in this town a lot less so that we see fewer vacancies and more businesses opening up. What, what are you